Jesus, for your protection. Hallelujah. We thank you for your covering, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I just pray right now, oh God, for those, oh God, that are unwell, Lord Jesus, and that are not here today, Lord. I pray, oh God, that you will just meet them, oh God, wherever they may be, Jesus. Oh God, send healing to their bodies, Lord Jesus, right now, oh God. Jesus, and those that are here in person, Lord Jesus, I just pray right now, Lord God, that you will just touch us all, oh God. Jesus, individually, collectively, Lord Jesus, outpour your spirit, Lord Jesus, in this service, Lord Jesus. Anoint, Lord Jesus, the worship leader, oh God, the musicians, Jesus. Hallelujah, God, those that are, are going to speak and take part in this service, Lord Jesus. We just pray, oh God, right now, Lord God, that you will just come in, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Let self be slain right now, oh God. Jesus, and we just ask, oh God, for your spirit, Lord Jesus, to lead us in this service, oh God, to direct us, oh God, my Savior. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you, oh God, for everything that you're about to do, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Have your sweet, divine way right now, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Jesus, Sister Deborah, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Pray. Praise the Lord. Amen. We've come to worship. We've come to give the Lord all the praise. So just focus on him. Don't focus on anybody else or your situation. Just focus on Jesus. Hallelujah. He's worthy of it all. Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God, come and move on us. Come and move.
We're talking about the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. 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 We want to feel that breathing. We want to feel that presence. Hallelujah. Jesus. Saints, let me just see you lift your hands and worship your God. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. We don't serve a God who is dead. He is alive. We serve the living God. Hallelujah. Amen. And in that he's worthy of all our praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. And we're going to wait on him. Hallelujah, Jesus. There's not a mountain to Wait on 
time of trouble, in the time of sickness, in the time of pain, we can call on the name of Jesus, who's also known as Yahweh, 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Enter in, come out of the flesh, get into the 
Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you for your spirit, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your presence, Lord Jesus. We can feel it in this place right now, Lord. Jesus, and we just worship you. We just adore you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Breathe upon us, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Breathe upon us, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Come in, Jesus. Yes, Lord, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, you are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, giving God thanks, hallelujah, this afternoon, hallelujah, for his spirit, I can feel it, hallelujah, his presence in this place, hallelujah, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You all may be seated, hallelujah, in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Greetings to you all again in the mighty name of Jesus, giving honor to our pastor. Hallelujah to those that are watching online and to the saints of God that cannot be in the presence of the Lord today. We are thinking of you and we are praying for you all in Jesus name hallelujah we've come one week in January so we've made it through the first week of January giving God thanks for that take it not for granted hallelujah praise the Lord we're going to have a time of testimony at this time so if you've got any testimonies now's your time hallelujah to jump up and to speak of the goodness of the Lord hallelujah church for the prayers they pray for my mother-in-law she did have a, a, a test the other day and the cancer as no has been gone amen, amen. praise and, the lord and she, and she said she said to me to tell the church said to thank them all for praying for her Hallelujah. Ex especially the pastor you know what i mean and then as for me things is working out in its own time for me and i feel good in myself and I just want to have, you know, perseverance and excel in the will of God, you know? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Wonderful testimony there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. That praise the Lord. Um, I don't have a sing song on my mind today, but I just want to give him praise. Um, I wasn't very well in the week, as we all know. But um, when I told the doctor what was wrong with me, Dr. Singh rang me and he says, uh, Michelle, the, the things that you've told me because you've coughed up blood, you've got to go to the hospital. You've got to um, 
you got to go, you got to have a scan to see if you've got a blood clot on your lungs. And I thought, oh, dear me. You know, I, I felt well, you know, but because of the symptoms, I've got to go. So I went to the hospital. But God gave me a calmness. I wasn't anxious. I wasn't worried what Do Dr. Singh said. God worked all the way through it. I wasn't getting anxious in the waiting room. I wasn't getting stressed about how long I'd got to wait. All the way through, God was with me. Be still and know that I am God. Amen. And he gave me breath in my lungs and he made me breathe when I felt like I couldn't breathe. Um, yeah, and as I was waiting and waiting for this scan, I got tired. I got really tired and I was in and out of sleep. I got my Bible out. I was reading the Bible. And a, a fella come in and he was hiccuping and the hiccups was shaking the bench we were sitting on. And there was really hard hiccups, like, whoa, right from his feet. He was about seven foot tall and the hiccups were so loud. And he says, I've been hiccuping since Monday. It was Wednesday or Thursday. I've been hiccuping and I've been hiccuping. And I thought, he says, that looks a good book, what you're reading. I said, it's the best book in the world. It's the Bible. There you go. <laughs> and um, I went, th they come up and they said, like, we've got to move you this, to another, another ward, another, another section of the hospital. Then I'll doze sort of into sleep. And then a doctor come along. He says, right, we're going to take you for your scan now. Went for the scan. Um, they, they said to me, oh, you've got to have two scans, one on your head and one on your body, on your chest. I was like, why? He's like, because you've had a seizure. I said, but I haven't had a seizure. I've had no seizure. Epilepsy. I'm not having a scan, but you're not doing one on my head. Oh, we'll have to check with that. He rang reception. Oh, we've got it wrong. There's two <laughs> Michelle's in. There's oh, two no. Michelle's in. We've got you mixed up. We've got her notes and your notes, and we tr wow. we're treating you for both. I said, well, I knew I didn't want the scan on my head. I'm not having no scan I don't need. So, okay, he says, all right, you was right, Michelle, we agree. Okay, okay, okay. So he did the scan on my, on, on my chest, got wheeled back through. It was lovely, a little trip through the hospital on, on a wheelie bed, <laughs> back, to the, back to the bay that they put me. And I went dro dozed off back to sleep again because it was like early hours in the morning. Another doctor comes on, he says, uh, Miss Slay, Miss Slay, wake up, wake up. I said, what? I've got good news. I said, what good news? <laughs> I've heard the good news. He, <laughs> said, <laughs> he says, it's all clear. You've got no blood clot, so you can get up and you can Amen. go home. So praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And even when I was waiting and I thought, oh, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, the Lord, now this, you're going you're gonna to raise your eyes and you're going to say, ah, right, as I was breathing, not breathing very well, a slow, gentle, beautiful breath was shadowing my breaths. And I knew it was the comfort of Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. So thanks be to God. God, you lifted me again. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So many people have felt the presence of the Lord and had healing this week. Give God thanks for that, Sister Elizabeth. Praise Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Sing. Praise uh, the Lord. Give thanks to the name of the Lord for seeing me through the first week maybe 2023 yeah. uh, I tested positive for COVID well I thank God that he saw me through Amen. so I would like to him. sing this song it's a mixture of English and my language but it's just the Lord. <laughs> sing, sister. it's just saying how mighty the Lord is okay. yeah. Amen. Amen. you are good you are kind you are more than this I'm lost for words Trying to describe you. Elohim, Elion, Halishelewi. Your greatness is all I have seen. There is nothing you cannot do. There's no mountain you cannot move. If you have said it, then you will do it. You have a track record of keeping your word. You're not about to stop doing it now. Oh, Lord, walk by oh, you are mighty. Oh, Lord, walk by oh, you are mighty. She be one of four to rush, 
Bless you, Sister Elizabeth, for that beautiful song of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Praise, praise the Lord. Just praise. want to appreciate God for his mercy, for his kindness concerning my life and my family throughout the year 2022. He's seen us through, and we are still alive up to this moment. There is a lot of things that have happened in the year 2022, but I give glory to the Lord that the Lord has been keeping us safe Amen. up to this present hour. Even though I'm not faithful to him, but he has been faithful to me and my family. He has been so good. Talk of provision, talk of it. I cannot even say, tell all, all other things that God has been doing in my life since the, uh, the day I came to this country. The Lord has been so good to me and my Amen. family. I did not for one time be in the hospital I give glory to God for his mercy and kindness upon my family, myself, and my family. I give glory to the Lord. May he continue to be praised in the mighty name of Jesus. I just want to sing a song. Amen. Sing. All power belong to God. 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 All power. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Any more testimonies? 
Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. His mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. He's a good God. It's a blessing to hear testimonies, to hear how God is in control. Hallelujah. Thank All you, by Jesus. himself. Hallelujah. Amen. I thank the Lord again one more time. Praise the Lord. Thank God for you, for you, you brothers and sisters. Amen. Without you, praise the Lord, there's, there's you know, there's, there's no, I have no one. Praise the Lord. Without my brothers and sisters, without those that are in faith. Hallelujah. Thank God for the church of the living God. Hallelujah. He said, yeah, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I thank God for the church. Hallelujah. The vessel, hallelujah, that he's put in place for me. Hallelujah. He said it's Zion. In the house of Zion. Zion is the church. Hallelujah. And it has a destination. Yes. And thank God, hallelujah, that he included me in his church. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Hallelujah. He saw a wretch like me. Hallelujah. Wandering. And he came and found me. I didn't find him. People said, didn't find Christ. I don't know how them find him. He's never lost. But I was lost. And he found a, a little boy like me. Hallelujah. So I'm so thankful today to be still here in the land of the living. Thank God for my brother. Praise the Lord. Brother David, we were out uh, yesterday. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. heard. Praise the Lord, the word of God. They heard the name of Jesus being spoken. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody got mad with me. <laughs> they got mad with me. And they said that his name is uh, Yeshua. <laughs> Don't call him Jesus. I said, what? I said, the name that delivered me? Praise the Lord. I ain't no Hebrew. I don't know no Hebrew language. Praise the Lord. I know his name as Jesus. The one that delivered me, hallelujah, and set me free. And boy, I got loud. I got loud, brother. You'd be ashamed of me, son. <laughs> but I'm allowed. I got loud. I got mean on him, didn't I, brother? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The spirit in me, not my flesh. But I have to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. The one that delivered me. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. That's the name. No other name among men whereby we must be saved. And in that name, and I begin to lift up that name. And you know what the man did? Don't do it, son. <laughs> right, my boy, now I got to do it. I got to do it. Praise the Lord. The, the man went down the road. He went down the road. And he turned back and he looked up me and got mad. And then he. Oh, no. Wow. And, and after telling me that I should be saying Yeshua. This man turns back and he lifts up his hands down and down and show him about it. At me, praise the Lord. I started rebuking the devil, praise God. I said, this is Satan. I said, this is what Satan will do. And I started telling him, hey, this is what the devil does. Praise the Lord to show the people what Satan is all about. Yeah, he's telling me about Yeshua. And I must just call my name Jesus. And then he behaved in that way. My Lord, I begin, boy, that gave me more fuel. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because it's not the man that I'm against. It was the spirit. The spirit of the devil was trying to get me all uh, messed up. And get me, you know, into the flesh. But I showed them how the spirit is moving. That devil in him. And I call, but I praise the Lord. So I'm so thankful to be able to be in town after being sick. All right? Amen. Praise the Lord. It was my wife's fault. Tuesday gave me this test, and I told me that I was, <laughs> you know, praise the Lord. Oh, Amen. Dear. It's all her fault. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm blaming again. Blame, blame, blame. Praise the Lord. But, you know, God is good. He's good. Touching my body, healing me, setting me free, praise God, to be a witness. We are to be a witness for Christ. Don't be ashamed of him. The devil don't want you to witness. He wants to close your mouth. 
But praise the Lord, I'm going to open my mouth. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. As long as I have breath in me, I'm going to give him praise. God praise bless you. Lord. Pray for me. Pray for the outreach. Pray yes. for the brothers, you know, that go out there. Yes, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. You don't know what the devil wants to come up in our face. Comes up in our face. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. But it's a joy. It's a joy to be on the battlefield of Christ. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Um, yeah, I had a rough week. I had a cold this week as well. But uh, praise the Lord, I came through. So we took down, well, on, on Monday it came on, and then middle of the week I was pretty bad. Friday I was pretty much better, and praise the Lord, we was out there together yesterday. Um, it's, it's kept me well. And yeah, that incident, I, I, I thought about that incident. Just, it, it was going on. This guy, obviously, something inside him, wanted to have a go at what the brother was saying. And he, this guy kept moving away. But because he was moving away, both of them, both of them were raising their voices. So what actually happened was a lot more people heard about Jesus. <laughs> you know, Amen. people 50 yards away were, were getting the word, you know. So it was turned back. It was turned back on this guy. And uh, something Pastor was saying this morning about like when you feel down. I felt down this morning for some reason. Sometimes you do. But ever since I've been in church, I haven't. You know, I'm, good, I'm, I'm feeling good now. And uh, that was a rousing song we just had. And uh, uh, it was really nice to hear a rousing song, especially one where it's easy to learn the lyrics. Yes. And I'll, I'll, I think I'll, even I, even <laughs> I might, might be able to remember that one. <laughs> so praise the Lord for all his blessings and for the church. Amen. Praise the, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. life unto himself and I declare and proclaim that 2022 better things are going to come my way and do it me in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. No more testimonies? Praise the Lord. Well it was good to hear all of the testimonies and just to hear of God working. So many of you were ill you've said and you're here today so we give God thanks for that healing touch and that you could be here in his presence today. I praise the Lord. We're going to collect up our tithes and our offering and we're going to sing um, number 95 from the Pentecostal hymnal. Hallelujah. So we will sing hallelujah. And when you found it, if you can just stand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When I first found Jesus, something on me stole, like lightning it went through me, and glory filled my soul.
Jesus, we thank you right now, Lord Jesus, for the offering, oh God, for those that were able to give. And we just pray, oh God, that you will just bless the offering, multiply it, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Remember the rest of this service and the one that will be speaking. Oh God, I just pray right now that you will just open up our ears and our understanding to receive a word from you. In your precious name, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We are going to read our scripture reading. Praise the Lord, which is taken from Ephesians um, chapter 6. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If you could just stand for the reading of the word. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I'll read and you can follow in Jesus' name. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honour thy father and, the, and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And he, fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and the abomination of the Lord. Ad, admonition, sorry. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling in singleness of heart has unto Christ. Not with eye service has men pleasers, but has servants of Christ doing the will of God from the heart. With good will doing service has to the Lord and not to men. Knowing that whatsoever good things any man doeth, the same shall receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. And he masters, do the same thing unto them, forbearing, threatening, knowing that your master also in heaven, neither is there respect of persons with him. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord, and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Praise the Lord. Wherefore, take upon you the whole armour of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all, stand. Stand therefore, having your learns gird about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God hallelujah praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereon with all perseverance and supplication for all saints and for me that uttereth may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to know the mysteries of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in the bonds that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak thank you Jesus but that you also may know my affairs and how I do Titus a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord shall make known to all things whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose that you may know our affairs and that he might comfort your hearts. Hallelujah. 23rd and 24th we can read together. Peace be to the brethren and love with faith from God the Father 
and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with you all that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So much in that scripture. Bless the name of Jesus. And our speaker is going to come and she's going to deliver the word for us. Sister Carol. Hallelujah. If we can just pray for her as she comes right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. Greetings in the wonderful, magnificent name of Jesus. I do appreciate your prayers and the prayer that um, Sister Tanya prayed, you know, um, before. Praise God, because, you know, this is always a daunting task when you stand before the people of God. Amen. And you just, you know, want to, um, you desire to bring forth the word and you really you know, want to do it in the way that he, it has been given to us. Amen, in Jesus' name. So I'm thanking the Lord, amen, for his goodness and his mercy in my life. Praise the Lord. Well, the, uh, the theme, amen, it's, well, make sure your seat belt is fastened. Amen. Make sure your seat belt is fastened. Praise God. You know, I just want to say I thank the Lord that despite some turbulence, you know, we, we had, some of us have had bereavement, some of us has had sickness, some of us has, has gone through um, financial situations, you know, um, but despite some turbulence, we landed safely on flight 2022. Amen? <clears throat> I'll say it again. We landed safely despite some of our losses we landed safely on flight 2022. We now are on board flight, amen. And I just want to encourage you as well as myself that as we, you know, some of us are, are on a fasting and some of us are just having, um, you know, a deeper consecration um, during this month, is to make sure your seatbelt is fastened securely for the journey ahead. And I'm going to say it again. You know, as we're on this flight, 2023, to make sure that your seatbelt is fastened for the journey ahead. You know, our car lights come up, comes on, giving us a signal that we need to buckle up, right? And those of us who've been on an airplane have seen the fasten your seatbelt sign, or light rather. And when you see that light, it could be one of three things. You're either about to take off, you're about to land, or you're about to experience some turbulence. In other words, it's time to buckle up. It's time to tighten up. All three are critical times during a flight. Why? Because all three are transitions. In the case of taking off, we know what to expect. Landing, we know what to expect. But when it comes to turbulence, it means that you're not sure what's going to happen. Yeah. And fear can grip you. Amen. Or it can try and grip you. And, you know, I thank the Lord for our Sunday school lesson today because, you know, it talked upon faith, you know, which is, um, praise the Lord, which is, what we, which is what we need in the times that we live in. So the word that has come to me, and it came to me two weeks ago before Pastor even asked me to speak, and it came to me like a in my ear, fasten your seatbelt, Carol. I just heard it so clear, fasten your seatbelt. Amen. And so we thank God for the word of God, which tells us what to do when your fasten your seatbelt comes up in your life. Each one of us is going to have that fasten your seatbelt comes up. And we thank God for the word of God that tells us what to do. Now, if we look at Ephesians chapter 6, from 10, I'm going to read. And as, and as we, Sister Tanya read it so beautifully, amen. You know, Paul is saying here, after everything else, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And then he tells us how to be strong in the Lord. He says, put on the whole armor of God 
that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Let me say it again. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the level, devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, can we remember that, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness, where? In high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand, and that means to stand, in other words, in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Each one of us is going to have that day. Amen. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and above all, take in the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, to with all and supplication for all saints. So as we could see in Ephesians chapter 6, it begins with the admonition to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. This is the key to understanding the armor of God. All the pieces of the army belong to him. You've got truth, you've got righteousness, you've got the gospel, you've got faith, you've got salvation, are all from God to his people. Amen. For their defense. All except the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. All the others are defensive in nature. All are designed to help us to stand against the wiles and the schemes of the enemy that, is, that wants to destroy each one of us. Now, when we think of the armor of a soldier, some of us, well, well I did, the first thing I think about when I think about the armor, I think about the breastplate, which, which covers you know, our organs. Or sometimes, you know, some of us, we just think about the helmet, which has protected you know, our head. Some of us think about the shield, which helps fend off the attack of the enemy. And maybe some of us, we think of the sword, which is a vital part of the armor for defense and counterattacks. But few of us would think about the belt. Amen. But Paul, in this um, passage here, he lists it right at the top of the list. If you, look at, if you have a look, amen. Um, The first thing he says in verse 14, how to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Right at the top. So this means it is one of the most important pieces. Why? Because on a Roman soldier, the belt held everything in place. Now, they had these big baggy tunics which they wore under their armor and the belt kept the tunic close. So in battle, if they had a longer tunic, they would take the four corners of the tunic, see if you can visualize this, they would take the four corners of the tunic, praise the Lord, and fold it up underneath the belt to keep their legs free and keep from getting tangled. This is why we we see that word um, girdens. Amen. So that's what they would do. They would get the tunics and try to, you know, put it up so that, so they'd be free. Amen. Praise the Lord um, uh, to keep their legs free and keep from getting tangled. Right. We can see what Paul literally meant when he wrote, "Stand therefore, having your loins girded with truth." It was a practice of getting the robe up out their way so they could run faster or work better. So with this in mind, we can see why Paul, although talking about a belt, which is worn around the waist, tells us to gird up the loins. The belt also has other girding up the loins, praise the Lord. It, it, also, it also kept the breastplate tight and secure around the soldier and kept it from banging against his chest when in battle. So if a soldier got rid of the belt, his breastplate would not be secure. 
His tunic would trip him up. His sword would drop to the ground. To stand strong in this battle, we must know the truth and live by the truth. Only in this way will the rest of the armor stay on us. Amen. Don't forget, I'm talk, we're talking metaphorically here because Paul, I mean, you know, don't forget, he was actually in prison when he, or in, under house arrest when he wrote this. So he's, he's looking at the Roman soldiers and he's comparing it to our spiritual armor. Amen. So he's comparing it to our spiritual armor. So this is why I think the first thing we see is, is, is this truth. So without truth, we are easily tripped up by the enemy's lies. Lies, no matter how big or small, are the things that destroy lives and relationships and futures. We cannot afford to have areas of deception in our lives. Just as with the belt, you cannot afford to have a broken belt or a belt with weakness. Truth, like a belt, to be effective, must be able to completely surround us so we can see the belt. Truth must be able to surround us front and back and must be strong enough to hold everything together. Amen? Praise the Lord. Without truth, the rest of the armor would be of no use to us. Without the belt of truth, the schemes of the enemy will definitely overpower us. Spiritually, our seatbelt is the belt of truth. We need to fasten on the belt of truth. Gird your loins in truth. The belt of truth prevents us from falling prey to the devil and his lies. I'm going to be repeating a lot of this again because we need to have repetition to really get this into us. Amen. If we don't have an understanding of the truth, the rest of the armor is useless. Amen. The belt, it brings order to your attire. You know, I mean, some of us wear belts with our clothing, whether it's a skirt or trousers. It keeps things up, doesn't it? Praise the Lord. It holds things in place. So Paul is using the human body to make a spiritual truth. The belt of truth protects us and prepares us for the battle that is part of every Christian's life. Truth will guard you against the, the lies of the enemy. Amen? Praise the Lord. So what is the truth being referred to as the belt? I mean, if we look a little bit close um, to Ephesians chapter 4, 21. Ephesians chapter 4, 21. It says, If so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. Praise the Lord. As the truth is in Jesus. Praise God. You know, Pilate... He asks that question, what is truth? Amen. And truth was standing right in front of him. There is no truth outside of Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Truth is absolute. It is absolute reality. Jesus is the absolute embodiment of truth. Amen. If we could look at John chapter 18, praise the Lord. John chapter 18, 37 to 38. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Talking to Jesus. Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto what? The truth. Everyone that is of the truth, what? Heareth my voice. Praise the Lord. Pilate saith unto him, what is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and saith unto them, in him I find no fault. Amen. Jesus, as I said, is the absolute embodiment of truth. How many times did he say to you, I tell you the truth? Or truly, truly, I say unto you, amen. You know, we're living in a time when you do you and I do me. And it's like, we're a happy family. That's my truth and that's your truth and we're all just fine, amen. That is not reality. If something is true, 
whether you believe it or not, the truth still stands. Uh, may not be popular, but if something is true, then something has to be false. It has to be a lie, right? We need to buckle that belt a little tighter around our life. Amen. Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying? We need to buckle that belt of truth a little around the life. If we have the belt crooked, we're going to have difficulty gripping the sword. Because don't forget, the sword from what Paul is saying here actually was in truth. Because it says it over here, um, I've got the wrong one, <laughs> in Ephesians chapter 6. Praise the Lord when he says, stand about, uh, stand with your loins skirt about with truth. And then he talks about the sword. Yeah. Um, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. But, but the sword is where the, the, the belt is where the truth, I mean, the, the belt, sorry, sorry, the, the sword was in the belt, if you know what I mean. The sword was in the belt. Amen. So um, we're going to have difficulty gripping the sword of the spirit. And in time, we're going to risk having certain parts of our body exposed. Similarly, if you don't adjust your seatbelt properly, its ability to protect you in a crash won't be as reliable. These days, seatbelts with shoulder straps are standard in new cars. However, if you're in an older car or an airplane, you'd have to adjust a seatbelt that, that goes only across your lap. If you're caring for a child, you'd have to adjust a seatbelt with a car seat. Regardless of your situation, taking a few extra minutes to put on a seatbelt properly can literally be a life saver. Similarly, taking time to examine yourself during this time that we all are desiring to get closer to God is vital. It is foolish to go into battle wearing a belt that can't, that can't hold you together. In other words, it's seriously going into a battle if you don't have the proper equipment with you. Amen. Uh, 2 Timothy 2.15 encourages us to rightly handle the word of God so we will not be ashamed. So in other words, make sure that you're dressed for action. About being prepared I mean, that, that's, that's, what we, that's when we're talking about the seatbelt. It's about being prepared for what's gonna, what lies ahead. Amen? It's, a, it's about being prepared. You know, truth also hurts. And I would rather be hurt by the truth than deceived by a lie. Amen? When Jesus gave the word, his crowd diminished. He asked Peter, will you go also? And where else do we have to go, Peter answered. If we look at John chapter 6, uh, 65 to 68. John chapter 6, six 65 to 68. Praise the Lord. Okay, praise the Lord. John chapter 6, 65 to 68. And Jesus, and he said, Therefore said I unto me, unto you, that no man could come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Praise the Lord. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, will you also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Praise the Lord. Amen. So truth can hurt. Everything we believe is based on truth. Everything we believe is based on truth. The Holy Ghost is what? The spirit of truth. Amen. The word says the word is truth. Living a godly life is called living in truth. We must worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen. No wonder it is the first piece of arm we must have on. Why is it so essential that we have to make sure that we've got this belt of truth on? Because, praise the Lord, because the devil is the enemy of truth. 
He is the father of all lives, of all lies. John 8, 44 says, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. Praise the Lord. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So this is when Jesus was talking to the religious leaders. And he said to them, these, to the religious leaders, you are of your father the devil. There is no truth in him. And as we said earlier on, Jesus bore witness of the truth. He said, everyone that listens to my voice is of the truth. You know, praise the Lord. Truth is, the, is, um, truth is defined by one thing. Amen. I'm not going to be very long. Praise the Lord. Truth is defined by one thing. What would Jesus do? Or rather, what would Jesus have me do in the situation? I think we covered that in one of the Bible studies. Um, not what I think or what I feel. We can't change God's word to suit our lifestyle. Our lifestyle must suit God's word. God's word, not man's ideas, set us free. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. If I say that again, God's word, amen, not man's ideas, set us free. Amen. So, thinking about this, praise the Lord, you know, how do we go about putting on the belt of truth? Amen. I, I think it's important that, that we sometimes ask ourselves certain questions. I think we did it even in the Bible study today in our, in our lesson. You know, so when we're thinking about something, who or what has the final say in my life? Is it my feelings? Yes. Amen. Who or what <laughs> has a final say. Do I, do I go by my feelings? Amen. Is it a person? Amen. Or do I simply do whatever is easiest and causes me the least amount of trouble? That's a popular saying, is a feeling. Majority goes by the feeling. Yeah, yeah, the majority goes by the feeling, but here, you know, and it's true, it could, could be the feelings. Are we going by our feelings? Can we go by a person? Or could we go by whatever it's easiest, take the easy way out? That's going to cause me the least bit of problems. Amen. It's something for us to actually check on, isn't it? I personally believe, amen, that when we have the, the belt of truth on, we need to have conviction. Amen. I don't believe you can stand without conviction. Amen. When I say conviction, I'm saying you've got to be fully persuaded. Amen. You've got, you've got to be fully persuaded that something is true. I'm not talking about just having the knowledge of what is true. I'm talking about being fully persuaded that it is true. Because um, I heard somebody say, you know, belief can, belief, I mean, in other words, we hold belief, but conviction holds you. Amen. Think about that. When you are convicted about something, and I'm talking about being fully persuaded about something, it shapes your thinking, it shapes your attitude, and it shapes your response to life. You can't base your convictions upon what you think or what you feel. We must search the scriptures. If we have a look at John chapter 8, verses 31 to 32. John chapter 8, verse 31 to 32. It says, if you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You can't be free if you don't know the truth. And you won't know the truth unless you continue 
in the word. I'll say that again. Amen. You can't be free if you don't know the truth. And you won't know the truth unless you continue in the word. Amen. Praise the Lord. If we could just get that sort of, that sort of um, understanding of that. Praise God. You know, it's, it's, uh, you, you, you have to continue in the word. You, you, you have to continue in the word. Amen. No matter what. Amen. You must be, you must continue in the, in the word. And that is what God is, is asking us to do. Praise the Lord. Amen. You must continue in the word. Amen. You know, in Jeremiah uh, 13, verse 11, amen, God spoke to the nation of Israel. And he said, for as the girdle cleaveth to the loins, this is Jeremiah 13, verse 11, for as the girdle cleaveth to the loins of a man, amen, so around us. So have I caused to cleave to so have I caused to cleave to me the whole house of Judah, saith the Lord, that they might be unto me a people and for a name and for a glory. But he goes on to say, but they would not hear. They would not listen. They, they had a choice, the people, the children of Israel, to be encircled with the truth of God's word or embrace deception. They chose, to, they chose poorly, and as a result, fell to pieces. In other words, there was destruction. This was not a decision just for Israel, but we all need to have, to have that. Fastening our seatbelts includes dedicating to the truth of God's word. Amen? Yes, amen. And for a name and for a praise, but they, they wouldn't listen. And I pray that we will... You know, really, listen, we heard it in Sunday school today, um, and we hear it all the time, that the need just to, just to get deeper, because we're, we're on a journey, amen? We, and now we don't know when, when that fast in your seatbelt sign is going to come up upon you, and you're going to have to buckle up in some way or some form, praise God, amen? So that's why I'm, I believe that we need to be fully convinced. Amen. We need to be fully, con you know, um, con convicted. Amen. Fully persuaded. You know, um, Charles Spurgeon, he was a well-known English preacher back in about, I think, in the 1800s. And he once said, um, discernment is not knowing the difference between right and wrong, but it's knowing the difference between right and almost right. Amen? Can I say that again? Discernment is not knowing the difference between right and wrong, but it is knowing the difference between right and almost right. We need to be like um, Abraham, if we look at uh, Romans chapter 4. If I could just get that scripture right quick. Romans chapter 4, verse 21, and it says... Um, uh, this talking about Abraham. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And then it says, and being fully persuaded, that's what I'm talking about, being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. Amen? What he had promised, he was fully persuaded. And, and if we look at again at Romans 8, chapter 30, Romans chapter 8, Amen. You know, uh, Paul is talking here. Uh, but we look, we're talking about having the truth of God's word, having that belt around us. And he says in verse 38, For I am persuaded, let's all get, get that full persuasion, that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. But the, the, the key word here is fully persuaded. Amen? Fully persuaded. Hallelujah, Jesus. If we look at um, Matthew chapter 16, here, here, here we're looking at, um, uh, 
you know, we're looking at, no, but who do people say about Jesus? You know, I mean, you know, in other words, what, and I remember a pastor praying one, uh, preaching one time upon the need to have a revelation. Praise the Lord. And if we look at Matthew chapter, I can find it now. Matthew chapter 16, praise the Lord, from uh, 13 to 18. So they're having a conversation, amen. And Jesus is saying, um, if we look at verse uh, 15, he said unto them, no, I'll, I'll go on a little bit further, when, from, starting from verse 13, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, whom do men say that I the son of man am? And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, another Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, but whom say you that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed art thou Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father, which is in heaven, which is in heaven. So it was, a, it was a revelation knowledge. Amen. You know, Paul, I mean, Peter was fully persuaded. Peter was fully convinced. Praise God. We need to be, and I think that is the, that is the key when we're putting on this belt of truth. How fully persuaded are you? Amen. For us to make sure that that seat belt is tightened. Are you fully convinced? As we were talking about today, truth is absolute. There's, there's no lie in truth. And the truth, as we know, it is, it's, it's in the word of God. Amen. And we, we need to, to come to that place, amen, where we just know that we are fully, fully persuaded. Amen. Having our loins girt about with truth. Amen. Praise the Lord. Having our loins girt about with truth. Truth is absolute. And there is no lie in truth. There's no, there's no room for deception. There, there's no room for deception. Praise the Lord. You know, there's a story... Um, about Muhammad Ali, you know, the, uh, the um, boxing champion of the world. And you know, he was, he was, he was a very um, confident man, wasn't he? You know, um, what did he say? I still like a bee. I forgot how, how it was to go, but anyway. Always joking, always telling stories. Anyway, so the story goes that he was on an airplane showing off when the airplane stewardess told him he needed to put on his seatbelt. And he said to her, do you, you know... Uh, do you know who I am? I'm Superman. Superman doesn't need a belt, doesn't need a seat belt. And her response was, Superman doesn't need an airplane. So can you get what I'm trying to say here? <laughs> you know, we all need to buckle up. No matter how confident we think we are, you know, we all need to buckle up. And I don't know if, this, if that story is true, but it goes to show you, you know, that we need it for our safety. It's for our safety. Do you know that firefighters are lost each year because they forget to wear their seatbelt? You know, I guess in, in the rush of trying to get to that emergency, but I don't know if they're going, they, they, some of them forget to put on their seatbelt. If you don't have your seatbelt on properly, you can lose your life. Amen. It could be quite fatal. Amen. So in closing, amen, I just want to say, you know, that we are told to put on the belt of truth. Amen. And it needs to be fastened tighter around us as we see things happening. And who knows what the, this flight of 2023 is going to take us. Amen. We already have had a couple of turbulences. We've had, what, five or six people within our own church that have, that have had COVID. Amen. You know, been attacked in health. Amen. It could be something else. But it should drive us more to know what the word of God is saying. Amen. It should drive us more. And, you know, and about being fully, fully persuaded. Have your convictions. Because your convictions is going to help you to stand. No matter what is around you, if you're fully persuaded, you're not going to budge. 
Just like with Abraham, he didn't budge. He was convinced that God said what it's going to say and is going to perform it. Amen. Peter was convinced he was the Messiah. There was no budging. I could, you could go around anybody and you, you're, you're not going to budge because you know without a shadow of a doubt. So if the Bible is not our foundation, then we have no foundation. Amen. We have no sound foundation. So I just want to say, buckle, make sure that that seatbelt is, buckle, is buckled. Yeah. Amen. Around your loins. Amen. Remember with the soldiers, what they had to do? They had to tighten it around them so they could run freely and nothing was going to hinder them. Truth does that to you. Truth sets you free that you can fight properly. Amen. So praise the Lord. So I just want to say, so that, so that you could stand secure in the promises of God throughout 2023 to have your seatbelt fastened. Amen. Be fully convinced, saints of God. Be fully convinced that we are actually in the truth. Amen. The truth of God's word. Amen. So praise the Lord. Do I hand it back to you, Pastor? Oh, Sister Deborah. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise in the Lord. name praise of Jesus. Lord. Thank you very much, praise Sister Carol. God bless you for the word. Amen. I think we, we understood what that message was about. Amen. We're just going to stand, every one of us. We're just going to make sure our seatbelt is fastened for 2023. We hear so much about what's coming, what's going on, but we need our minds to be focused on him and not those situations. And in that, we need to make sure we're secure. So I'm not going to ask you to come to the front. I'm just going to ask you just to, wherever you are, just close your eyes. Because this is between you and him. Let's make sure our seatbelts are fastened for whatever is going to come our way. Let's pray, saints. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus, oh God. We're praying, oh Father, Lord Jesus, for you, oh God. Hallelujah, to guide us and lead us through this year that we're about to go through, Lord Jesus. We don't know what tomorrow may bring. We don't even know what will happen when we leave this place. But we know that we serve a God who is mighty. We serve a God who is truth. Hallelujah. And we know that if we put our faith and our trust in you, then you will see us through the storms of life, regardless of the economy, regardless of the finances, regardless of sickness. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, we know that we serve a God. Hallelujah, he's the creator, not only of us, but of this earth that we live in. And we know, Lord Jesus, that you are in charge. You know it all. Hallelujah, we're just seeking you right now. That as we go through, Lord Jesus, as we take this flight for 2023, Lord, you'll be with us. You will watch over us, oh Father, Lord Jesus. Not only us, but our families, our loved ones. Help us as we continue to reach out to them that don't know you, Lord. That they will in this hour seek you, Lord Jesus. For no one knows the day nor the hour when you will put in your appearance. It could be this year. It could be this month. It could be today. Lord Jesus, we know we just have to be prepared and ready, Lord Jesus. So help us, oh God, to be encouraged today in this word. Thank you, Lord, for our sister, Lord Jesus, who has shared, oh God, Hallelujah, and I pray that we will not just be hearers, but we will be doers, Lord, and that we'll make sure our lamps are trimmed and burning, Lord, and we'll make sure our seatbelt is fastened for the journey. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your word today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you do need prayer, you can still to the front if you have a need amen or if you just want to remain where you are just put your hand up we can pray for you amen i just have one request amen if you could pray for my husband amen i'm just going to ask if you can just come forward and i'm just going to ask the saints who are able just to lay your hands upon him 
prayer. I know you pray for him daily anyway, but if you can just anoint him and just pray for him right now, saints. I would appreciate that. He's our shepherd. Hallelujah. Just reach your hands forward. Hallelujah, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we know that you're able, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. You are God. You are mighty. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. You are a healer. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. You're covering upon the shepherd, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray, oh God, that you help him and strengthen him daily, oh God, in his walk. Hallelujah, in his, oh God, sacrifice to you, Lord. Lord, he, oh God, chose his path, oh God, and we know that you're with him, Lord Jesus. So, Lord, I pray that you continue to lead him, oh God, keep him, Lord, safely, encourage his heart, strengthen him in mind, body, and spirit. Spirit, Lord Jesus, that he will continue to stand, oh God, today. Hallelujah. Thank you for the saints and the family of God who are praying for him, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord, that we're a church who loves to pray for each other. We feel each other's burden, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. We just pray for your strength right now. Hallelujah, Lord. Protector, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for all you're doing in his life and what you continue to do. Hallelujah. And I pray that the church will continue to unite as one. That whatever we face, we face it together, knowing that the Lord, hallelujah, Lord Jesus, knowing that the Lord is able. Have your way, Lord, we pray.